seven figure grand from across the room. I see your patience are short with all these dancing fools. I see that you're the type of girl that likes a tattoo. I see the way you looked at me when I came walking through. So don't hesitate, bro. Sing the night of the moon. Don't let the night go. Now don't let it go. It is that time again. This is Mike here with the Twisted Hour here on WBZ95.com. You can also find us on the Orange Radio app. Of course, you know, the radio station is still down. They're still under quarantine and whatnot, so they're not able to get into the building down there in New Orleans. But we are doing everything remotely for now. And that's why you're going to be listening to us uh, eventually on the radio station as we plug it in there. Uh, but right now you're listening to us on the Twisted Angels YouTube channel. And we welcome all of you there. You can find the Twisted Hour on Facebook. Just uh, go into your little search bar and type in the Twisted Hour and you'll find us there. Uh, and you can also find us on Instagram. Again, put in the Twisted Hour and you'll find us there as well. So anyway, uh, this week we have a special guest. We have Her name is Stephanie, but she's better known as Blondie Braps. Uh, she's from Florida. Um, she's been modeling uh, for less than a year now. I think it's about six months or so. But uh, uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna, we are going to welcome her. Uh, Kelsey is going to be with us during the first half of the show, or I'm going to be on the first half of the show, the first segment, and then with Brianna, Brianna Blue, my better half, she will be taking over the second half, and I'll be back to wrap things up. But in the meantime. We've got some cool new music coming your way, and we will announce that a little bit later. Uh, we're going to keep you all in suspense. And other than that, we are glad to be back again this week. And we've got all kinds of stuff coming up in the coming weeks, so please tune in and uh, stay twisted with us. And we hope everybody's staying safe, being smart during this uh, this mess of uh, you know, the coronavirus. So uh, we hope everybody's you know uh, doing okay, and uh, hopefully we can... Uh, Get you to feel a little bit better for a little while while well, we have our special guest today. So we'll be back in a few minutes with Blondie Braps. It's your girl Minnie Rennie from the Twisted Angels in New Zealand. Tune into the Twisted Hour here on WBUZ 95, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come check us out and listen to some antics. All right, and we are back with Shannon, also known as Blondie Brap. Uh, she's with the Twisted Angels. She's been with us for uh, not real long. How long have you been with us now? You haven't been here with us too uh, long. I don't think it's even been a year yet. No, no, so no. I'm pretty new. Yeah, last fall because we did. Um, we had like our deadline was in November because we cut off all that to get ready for the event series this year, which we had yeah. to put off. Which we had to put off to next year because of the the virus that was so. Uh, convenient to pop up for everybody so uh but yeah so that's that's been loads of fun so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna kick it we're gonna jump right into it so how long you've been with us for you know roughly about six seven months or whatever how long have you actually been modeling probably about that same amount of time i, I don't even really consider myself like a model like i'm still in the beginning like still new at it still trying to get things figured out still trying to get the ball rolling on it so i'm still pretty new so i don't maybe it's more like a hobby on my side but mm -hmm. i'm trying to get into like the whole modeling thing so at, at what point do you really think you'd start calling yourself a model then because i mean we certainly think of you as one so you know what goal of yours do you, do you really think would like make you feel like you're there um I'm not totally sure because, 
like when I think of a model, I think of models that are doing it full time and make like really good money off it. So that's what I think as a model. So that's why I kind of consider it as more of a hobby or maybe like part time. But it's different in everyone's eyes. So like yeah. everyone thinks. It's it's cool hearing that from everyone. I was like, oh, like you guys think I'm a model, but like in my eyes, I'm just like another person. Yeah, <laughs> well, I think there, there's really yeah. there's really kind of like four four types of models. Really, there's the there there's the part timer. You know, they're they're the ones that you know they they have their daily lives, they have their jobs, they have families, that kind of thing, and they do it. They do it either for fun or they might even do it as a supplemental income or whatever the case may be. And then you have, you know, the ones that are just in it for like the ego boost. You know, they're not really in it for anything other than to have somebody say, oh, yeah, you're a model. And you're like, yeah, 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 I am. And then uh, then you have the, the, the ones that uh, really just kind of it lands in their lap. Somebody comes up to you one day and says, hey, you know, we think you could be a model. You could do this. And then you just kind of. It kind of rolls from there, and then um, and then you get the 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 last kind is really like the the ones that really want it to be a full time gig, and they they really kind of you know go at it full time, and and they have the time and and what not to do that. They may not necessarily have a family yeah. and kids and stuff like that to do that or whatever or other obligations. So you know mm-hmm. they kind of call them the tiger models and stuff like that because they kind of scratch and claw, and they're they're <laughs> they're they're anxious to get you know any opportunity there. So. Um, yeah. You know, but I would probably say, at least, especially in, in the alternative model, you know, part of the industry, easily seventy five percent or more are you know part time, you know, which you would consider mm-hmm. part time because they have their daytime jobs, and you know, a lot of them also are, are tattoo artists or they do you know any other type of things that uh, you know keeps them busy and whatnot. So, um, but uh, you know, it, really anybody, you know, if you if you're getting out there and you're doing the things such as what you do. Um, and we'll get into that here in a little bit, but you know, you've been published and whatnot, so that's yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're kind of model, kind of, kind of, sorta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. In, in a in a roundabout sort of kind of way. <laughs> yeah. So you got your your model name is Blondie Brat. I mean, obviously your, your real name is Shannon, but. What had you come up with the name? How did you come up with that name of Blondie Brat? And then we're going to get into what Brat means here in a minute. But tell us how you came up with that name. Um, I'm, I came up with Blondie Braps, so I have these really two good friends that I ride dirt bikes with. They're a husband and wife couple, and her, her husband would just always call me, like, Braps, like, hey, Braps, so I think it came from that, but, like, uh, dirt biking and motorcycles are a huge hobby of mine, especially when I lived out in California. I was out riding every, almost every weekend dirt biking and then if I wasn't out dirt biking I was out on my street bike so mm-hmm. even now like I commute on my street bike so um Bondi Braps kind of like was fitting for me so I think that's how it came about and then like since that was my like Instagram name I was like well I kind of like that so I'm probably going to keep it as mm-hmm. like my, my stage name so. right right well that's cool now and I noticed that pattern there you live in California then then you moved to Florida, so you, you moved to, you lived in one state, and then moved to another state where you can pretty much ride a bike all year round. I see the, I see a pattern there. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, uh, Florida, you have to watch out, because they have those, uh, crazy rainstorms that happen. Like, one time, I was trying to ride to work, and it was just raining so bad, I had to turn around, and I, I, like, get home, and I have to, like, dump my boots out of water. I'm like, wow. uh, I guess I'm driving over. <laughs> I had to, like, text my supervisor, like, hey, I'm gonna be late. That's funny. So, but that's during the, the summer. I think it's like that. So I have to like watch out. Yeah, it's like hurricane season. My uh, yeah. my dad and grandparents they, they all lived in Florida, so I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Pretty well. Yeah, my my daughter <laughs> li- my bad. daughter lives outside of Gainesville, so she's always talking okay. about how they have. She says it could, it'll be sunny like through mid part of the day, and then you get like a twenty minute you know thunderstorm, and then it clears up like it never rained. Yeah, you know, that's so it's pretty crazy. Yeah, too. that's cool. Now, so getting on with that, what does BRAP mean? And for those of you that don't mean that, it's spelled B-R-A-A-P. So explain to us about that, and, and we were talking a little bit about it before we came on the air, about what you want to do, what you would like to do with that. So tell us a little bit about what it means and and, and, uh, and then what, you, what this project is that you're thinking about doing with it. So to me, the word BRAP to me, to make it simple, like, the sound that a dirt bike makes, like, mm-hmm. brap, but, uh... 
Wait, wait, wait. Do, like do that. It. Do that one more time. We got to hear the sound effect <laughs> one more time. <laughs> There's uh, YouTube videos of people making motorcycle sounds. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but... There's some really good YouTube videos of people making uh, dirt bike sounds and motorcycles. They're like, oh, it went like this. Why? Like, brop, brop. Why? Why? I'll I mean, be doing that all night in the shower tonight. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I don't live in that house. So, you know, but then again, you know, Brie, Brie will probably do that later too. So you know. <laughs> There's a story from a photographer, uh, Knuckle Crew. Uh, mm -hmm. He he was kind of help me out with some of the things with inked mad contests and he would be like oh there's brat and he'd be like brat what like, yeah that's cool <laughs> but uh to me it's just simple it's like the sound of a dirt bike but it's also like that word means a lot more to like um it's a huge hobby of mine and it's just like throttle therapy like nothing can compare to like what you can get on being out on a motorcycle and dirt bike you know so <clears throat> It's funny you said that as, as far as thro throttle therapy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we, we do a lot with, I mean, like, and Kelsey will tell you, too, you know, for from the model's perspective and even the photographer's perspective and, you know, and even tattoo artists, there's tattoo therapy, there's or what they call ink therapy, there's, uh, you know, photo photography therapy, you know, that kind of thing. Dance. Well, yeah, dance therapy, yeah, because she, you know, she knows that because she's a dancer, so yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, what, uh, now you said, you were mentioning you, you had a project in mind to, around the, the BRAP noise. What, what were you thinking about doing to explain that, what you wanted to do? And feel free to, you know, throw in the, the sound effect anytime. Yeah, that's fine. You're, you're, you're okay with that. <laughs> All right. So my mom, um, so one of my friends, I was wearing that tank top. I love BRAP. And she's like, what does BRAP mean? I'm like. Brap, it's the sound of a dirt bike. Like she's like, oh. And then There's that sound mom, effect again. <laughs> I just tell everyone the the sound of a dirt bike like really fast. But uh, my mom, she's like, what does brap mean? Like you should make a video about it. I'm like, that's like a really good idea. So instead of me making the video about it, I wanna. Um, I already asked a few different people, but they never got back to me about it. But, well, shame uh, on want, them. <laughs> I just have to remind people, you know, like. It's just like kind of like reminding people. So for me, like I want to get different perspectives of what I'm going to ask everyone. Like, I don't care if you ride motorcycles or not, but I went and asked random people, my friends so far, people that ride, people that don't ride. And I want to get video clips of everyone explaining what brat means to them. Uh, what do they think of when they hear the word brap or when they read the word brap? And I kind of want to do like a, try to make some little video about it. So I think that'd be a cool little thing. I always so, thought of it as like, like dirt biking. That's bike, a really it? cool idea. Yeah. So. Well, it's, it's good to get like a really broad audience's uh, perspective so that yeah. you can kind of see what each, you know, I don't want to say click, but each um, genre, for lack of a better yeah. word, of people, you know, w would think about first thing in their head when they see you or hear about you as a model to just kind of know how you're portrayed to each section of people is, is I mean, that's a smart and pretty cool idea. Yeah, like... Oh, uh, I was saying earlier, one of my friends, I asked her about, I was like, hey, can you make this little clip explaining what you think brat means or what it means to you? And she's like, oh, I have no idea what that means, and I have <laughs> nothing to do with that. And I'm like, well, perfect. Like, you can say exactly that. Like, that's yeah. perfect, because I want different answers. So, and it, kinda, actually, like, that's, that's kind of funny, that. too. You're, you want the truth. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. You want the truth, and it's kind of funny too if you think about it, because you have you going yeah. along, you have a couple of people saying, "Oh, it means this, it means this," and then you have somebody say, "I have no idea what the hell that means." <laughs> so it's just you know, it shows that shows that variety there. So that's that's actually you know, like Kelsey said, yeah. that's that's a really cool idea. Mm -hmm. Now you, I think I'll make it a little bit entertaining too. So right, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you should you should throw it out there to the Twisted Angels and see how many of them even know have you even seen it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, like so on the, the, the page and just like, hey, can you? Yes. Me? That's a good idea. Yeah. I should do that. Well, not only that, I mean, if you think about it, you have you have Twisted Angels in what nine different countries now. So yeah, it, it would be interesting to, interesting to see 
you know, how people in other countries, you know, have they ever seen it before? Does it mean anything to them? You know, is it a curse word in their native language? <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, one guy said it was the sound of an airplane. I've never heard of an airplane making that crap. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. You know, not, not unless it's... It's probably... You know, like, sounds like it's crashing. <laughs> One of those planes, one of one of those uh, prop planes as it's as, as as it is about to crash. That's about that's what that reminds you of. So it was like a Toys R Us garbage going full throttle. With, with some three year old driving it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That would that would that would be my daughter Riley. She'd be driving the Barbie Jeep and crashing into everything. Oh my god. Have you guys seen that? There's a there. there's there's that meme or that that gif that people will post every now and then where it's got this little blonde haired girl. She's like driving one of those little uh, little like battery battery cars or whatever, but she's like skidding out onto the road and it's this little red sports car. She got her hands up in the air, so uh, and she got sunglasses on. So you know that's yeah, I've seen that. yeah that 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 would be Riley. I mean that's definitely that would be Riley every step of the way. So. She, but um, so moving forward, now you, you got into modeling. How how did you get into modeling in the first place? What what um, you know we talked about how long you've been doing it and whatnot. But but what got you into it in the first place? I mean, did somebody just come up to you and say, "Hey, do you want to do this?" Or is this something you were kind of thinking about doing? And it kind of what, what happened? I think it all started from the Inked Mag competition that I did in uh, twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. And like ever since I did that, I was. Um, I had, like, no clue what I was doing. Like, I just, I was like, I'll just do this competition and see what happens. Because I had tattoos. I'm like, okay, let's do this. And I just, like, dove into it head first and, like, had no idea what to expect. Worked my ass off. But it also, like, it, like, opened up doors to things as, like, photographers, um, modeling, and, like, getting to know people and talking to people. And also, like, researching YouTube for, like, oh, like, I use YouTube a lot for, like, the modeling stuff. So, like, I uh, screenshot a lot of poses that I like. I try to mimic that stuff. And uh, I think it just, I think it started from the Ink Mag competition just because of that. And I was starting to get into uh, doing photo shoots just because that competition wanted new, like, content all the time. And, like, they would give you, like, little uh, tips of what to do to help you, like, mm -hmm boost your votes and get uh, followers and people to vote for you and a lot of it was just like modeling like getting photographers to get pictures to post and like videos and it just all started from that so that's cool now did you see yeah. that did you see that um once you once you were in the competition and everything is that what led you to do the 504 dimes magazine because that was was that your first publication that, that you were you were published in so my so Inked Mag is like technically my first publication because of the competition, but Fast Life came up, so Fast Life is my second uh, mm -hmm. publication, but it came out first. So like, which one's my first one? You know, like yeah, I, well, I did all this stuff with. <laughs> so I got uh, fat. I got the like hard copy of Fast Life first. So. What do you guys think? Like, I say Inked Mag is my first one, but I ended up getting Fast Life in the mail first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of those things where it's kind of six half dozen the other because you have, I mean, yeah. one, one you shot for or you, you did stuff with that, you know, first, mm -hmm. but it didn't come out until later. So you really kind of, yeah. you kind of go by which one kind of drops first, you know, which one becomes available to the public first. Yeah. Yeah. So technically, okay. I guess you would say, you know, Fast Life would be your first one because it was available to the public first, and then, mm -hmm. then the Inked Mag would be your your second one from that from that perspective. Yeah. That's how, that's yeah, how they would look at got it anyway. Hired by Inked first, but you were published by Fast Life first. That was your first publication. You know, yeah, I, I guess it's just because the time frame of how long it took to get everything done, like the photo shoot mm -hmm. with Inked, and then getting all that stuff like fixed in the magazine and. It, I think it was done by, like, days. Like, it must have been, like, really close because mm -hmm. we had to wait for it to come out at Barnes & Noble to get that mag. So yeah, I think that was what happened, too. Yeah, for which one? Was that for Fast Life or for uh, Ink? That, that was for saying? Inked Mag. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you could order it off, like, the website, mm -hmm. but it was also, like, 
I wanted to go look for it at Barnes Noble, like, and get pictures with it. So that was like <laughs> kind of making me wait to get it too. But then I ended up getting Fast Life in the mail first. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's really not a lot of publications, you know, that that are, how should I put, they they don't they don't stress the the newsstand side of it, the hard copies as much as they stress the digital copies now because the yeah. the, the, the profit margin is greater, and and not only that, people will rather download something they can look at it later or whatever, and instead of you know having a stack of magazines in their house, so it just kind of depends yeah. on you know the way the way it works. I mean, even even the old school ones like Playboy and Maxim, they all have their digital side of things too, and and they yeah. kind of scaled back their newsstand stuff. So, you know, it is what it is. So how did so in, in dealing with that with with do, uh, doing the Ink Mag and the Fast Life, what led you to Fiber Four Dimes? Because you're you're more or less their their feature model now, right? Yeah, I'm one of uh, the Fiber Four Dimes models. Um, I think I shot. I think it was Fast Life, and then like, Babe Watch came out next, and I don't know if that squeaker is too loud, but... <laughs> um, I thought there was a monkey loose somewhere. I wasn't really sure. <laughs> no, you know, and, and I know I know people... I totally did, too. Yeah, I and I know, I know, I know. People in Florida have the like weird pets and stuff. I mean, you know, because my daughter has chickens and and lizards, and and Brittany has lizards and. Well, other well, crazy she's got frogs the, and stuff like that. Have you guys seen the stories of uh, the lizard I'm watching? It's like a 15 pound tegu. Oh my god! No, I haven't seen that. No, uh, you know, I, I don't think I'd want to. You know, no, I'm not really too keen on you know waking up with a lizard looking at me really weird. I, you know, I just like I'm lunch. See, yeah. I always loved reptiles, and I'd be like totally cool with them. But I'm, I'm a crazy cat lady at heart, and because of my cats. I would be too scared to bring anything <laughs> smaller than the the house because they'll they'll fuck up my sock if yeah. I wiggle my toe and they don't see it's attached to my leg. <laughs> They're like, no kill. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like cats they are totally like that. Yeah, they really are. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we we just we we like dogs and whatnot. I've had dogs. Bree has had dogs, but now we just have cats because it's just easier to travel with and everything. So yeah. they're they're yeah, a little, they're a little I, more independent and easier to take care of. We just have somebody mm -hmm. stop by, you know, every couple of days, make sure they, they haven't haven't spilled their food and the water out all over the place, you know. Yeah, but, make sure all the doors and windows are locked in case you have escape artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah there is that dogs, too. So yeah, like, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. We we have definitely dealt with that in the past. Absolutely. You know, we definitely, we definitely had to deal with I, that. I used to have a cat that could, uh, could actually open doors that had the, uh, if it wasn't a round knob and it was yeah. the, like, handle that came out flat yeah, to yeah. the side, he was tall enough and strong enough to wow. get up and open it. So you had to lock every door. He would just let himself and everyone else out. Man, I bet that made it interesting when you had to go to the bathroom. Oh, oh, it was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I just stopped shutting the door eventually. Well, the the one cat we had, uh, it was really funny. Bree would go to the bathroom. The cat would just uh, just n keep knocking on the door, really, and sticking the paw under the door and everything until she let him in. Let her in. I'm sorry. And then she would like crawl into like her pants on the butt. <laughs> oh, she got pants down around her ankles, and a cat just like crawled right in there. <laughs> in the boxers and the trophy, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So that's you know she would have to deal with that all the time. And then she, and then she sit there and call. And then she would yell for me to come and get her, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, you let her in. I, you know, I have yeah. nothing to do with it. You know, I, <laughs> you know, that, that's that's for you. You got your own potty party going on there. I don't need to be part of it. So you know, but uh, but yeah. So but now we've got we've got two we got two little ones that like to try and get in. Now, thankfully, Peyton cannot reach the doorknob, but but Riley can. So you have to make sure you lock your doors because if you don't, you know, you're you're in for a surprise. Yeah, you know, she'll and she'll come in and say hi, or she'll say peekaboo. <laughs> she does the whole peekaboo thing now when she opens doors, so you have to kind of watch out for that. So that's pretty funny. That's cute. Yeah. So how many publications, or I'm sorry, how many issues of uh, five? We were starting to ask that. What what got you connected to Five or Four Dimes? How did that work out? I it, I think it was Instagram. Um, 
I can't remember who messaged who or who started following who, but somehow we started uh, talking and he was interested in, he's like, hey, do you want to come out and like do some shoots with me for Five Before Dimes? I'm like, hell yeah. So I had to fly out there. And I have an amazing time mm-hmm. with Five Before Dimes. He's, a gr- he's super great, like amazing. He's super helpful. And I, I think I talked to him like almost... I gotta say, like, every other day or every three days, just talking, like, hey, or when are you gonna come out and, like, shoot with me next? I'm like, well, there's, like, this virus stuff going on. There's <laughs> a virus, <laughs> might, you know. But Do you it, have it's to also, do like... <laughs> and then, like, I, I work a lot, and so it's, like, sometimes it's hard for me to just up and go for, like, right. a shoot that's out of town, yeah. especially. So it's, he's in another state, so that makes it a little bit harder. But, um, yeah, we have, like, a bunch of ideas, especially... Um, I have a twin sister, so she's moving out here in Miami. Oh wow! I can't wait. But uh, we're uh, we're talking about doing a um, like a a double trouble or mm-hmm. twin issue for Five Hundred Four Dimes. So that'd cool. be like really cool. Well, so, yeah, that'd be real cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, my Bree Bree's got an identical twin. Her sister Amber. So oh they, really? Yeah. No, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yep. well, I'm paternal, but some people think we're identical at first. So yeah, well now Bree, Bree and Bree and Amber are damn near identical. I mean, for I guess because you know I, I've been with Bree long enough, I can cut. It's easy for me to kind of tell them apart. I mean, she'll show me like yeah, ba- yeah. she'll show me like baby pictures and say which one's me. And, she, and, and when I tell her, she's hard. Yeah, well, no. Then she'll sit there and say, "How do you know?" And I'm like, "It's just the way your eyes are. I can tell you know by the shape of the face and stuff like that." So. Okay. And part of that might just be from being a photographer. You tend to notice those things yeah, and, and yeah. whatnot. So, but um, yeah, those details. Yeah, she's always trying stump. to stump me. She stump. <laughs> she she has stumped me a couple times, but most of the time I, I usually get it right. Either that, she just she just goes along with it, so I feel better. I don't know. It could be it could be that too. You never know. <laughs> but uh, I'll like I'll run into the problem where I'll see baby pictures of us. I'm like, is that one really me or? What if they switch the set birth? Like, what? Like, April. <laughs> and then uh, when she was married, um, I'd be in the house, like, I'd be like bent over trying to put trash away, and her husband was like about to like smack my ass, and he's like, oh shit, like that is not April. Like, ah. so he, had it, he didn't do it, but he was said he was like super close to doing it, but. Yeah, if we're like turned around or have like the same clothes on or hair done the same, like if you're not like really paying attention, I think you'll we can stump you pretty good. So that's you'll funny. Thank you by accident. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Well, now with with five or four dimes, is that do they have a specific um, genre? Because I noticed that the the big issue that you were in, you it was more of a pinup style. Is that pretty much what they do, or they do a, a variety of, of he, themes? He does uh, they do a variety of stuff, so that, he knows that I like the pinup style, mm-hmm. so he was trying to go for more of the pinup theme, but, um, he, like, he just released, I think, or he showed me a sneak peek, I don't know if it's out yet, or coming out, but he, he did, like, a comic book theme, and oh, okay. he just does a lot of different stuff, and it's really cool, he does Pretty in Pink, Rock Goddess, I think I let out the video of the behind the scenes of the Rock Goddess. Um, he does ev- like everything. Like I have a Fourth of July one coming out with him soon, so he does everything. Now, when you when you work with him, uh, different publications are are a little bit different. You know, he does the different mm-hmm. themes and stuff too, like most of them do. Now, does he? Now yeah. he offer he offers both the hard copy and the and the digital copies as well. Correct? Yeah. 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 Now, do you find that, because um, I know, uh, the one thing, and I, and I do have to commend you on this, uh, the one thing that I really like is that when we have, um, you know, when we post something on, on Instagram, I notice mm-hmm. you're one of the one of the people that tends to, you know, share it again in your story and stuff like that, so you're, you're very supportive of your, your fellow Twisted Angels, so that's always really great to see. Now, do you find yeah. that, do you find that in, in general, you know, that when you're, doing your social media stuff doing it yourself do you sometimes feel like you're overwhelmed trying to keep up with everything or do you just you know designate certain periods of time during the day to kind of okay i'm going to go and you know do this then or you know like brie'll do it like when she's going to the bathroom she'll go i'm gonna i gotta go to the bathroom and then you know 
20 minutes later, she's like, she's got like 20 different posts. No, I'm only kidding. She has, <laughs> I'm only kidding. She doesn't do it then. But That's yeah, well, she probably doesn't. That's exactly what I do. Especially well, I believe when it. I'm actually having to work like a full work week. <laughs> and I like want to keep posting for, you know, radio shows. So I'll like take, you know, uh, poop breaks at work and just grab my phone real quick and sit in there and like do my promoting. I'm like, woo! Kill so accomplished. <laughs> Two in one. Get it? I'm funny. Yeah, that's so that's now really, I know that, when I see a poster of Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> you'll know that every time you see one, you'll say, "Well, that." Yeah, every time you see that, you'll say, "Well, that was a productive poop for Kelsey." There you go. That was that was that was a PP. Okay, so that was that was a productive to save poop for Kelsey. A little bit here. Sometimes <laughs> I'm just bored and taking a break, and I'm sitting on the toilet with my pants on. Okay, so uh, now everyone poops. <laughs> <laughs> so. With that, with, with that in mind, what we're gonna do, we're gonna break now. We're gonna take a break and pay some bills with some ads and stuff. So we're gonna be right back with Blondie Brat Shannon with the Twisted Angels and Kelsey. And I think I'm gonna check and see if uh, Brianna is available to hop on here for a little bit. So we'll be right back in just a few. Diamond Dahlia, winner of Hell City Hotties. And Hall Dan Trill from Iconic Tattoo here in Arizona. Tune in to Sit Hour here on WBUZ 95, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check out the Twisted Angels. All right, uh, this is Brianna Blue. Mike stepped out to handle the kiddos for this evening while I have my fun. Because mommy needs a break. <laughs> so, how are you doing, Blondie? I'm, I'm having fun. Uh, oh, I'm having fun on this show. It's funny. It's great. Is it? <laughs> Uh, it wouldn't have anything to do with most mostly laughing. That ha that would have nothing to do with Michael's face, would it? I it's probably because of Mike's face, but it's it's okay. I guess we can leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> So, um, I hear pinup is your, one of your favorite themes. Yeah, I love pinup. It's, I feel like I don't get to do it as often as, as I would like to, though, so, but yeah, I, I love it. I want to start going to, uh, once everything starts opening up, I want to start going to, uh, like, car shows, like, dressed up just as a pinup girl, because usually there's photographers there. And they're like, hey, I want to take your picture. So I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I actually got my start at car shows and bike shows and, okay. you know, stuff like that. And it's an incredibly fun environment. And it's perfect, like you're saying, for pinup and, you know, that style. And, um, yeah. yeah, absolutely go for it. I mean, aside from it being, you know, the type of modeling and pictures you really want to do, it's um yeah it, it's just fun overall yeah it's like really good uh networking too so i think it'd be fun like you said and i haven't got to uh do that idea yet because i was like thinking of the idea and then everything like shut down i'm like okay i guess go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know a bunch of uh my modeling friends who dabble in pinup and it's it's almost as friendly as the the tattoo industry. They're really sweet. Okay, yeah. Um, I know Rosie Rockabilly. She's one of our Twisted Angels. She recently moved from New York to Arizona, and she okay. does a bunch of pinup for uh, you know car shows and all that other stuff. So yeah, um, yeah. I've I've always wanted to do it, but <laughs> I don't know how to do the hair. <laughs> thing is like I could kind of do some of the hair but I, I try to look for uh, I found one girl that does pinup hair really well so 
Sweet. I can learn it myself, but it's like, I'm probably just going to go to her to do everything. I don't blame you. I would do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some hairstyles. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, how do you do that? And I'll yes. It's a YouTube tutorial, and I'm like, it's like, like, uh, yes. I know. Oh my gosh. I had to ask Rosie when I was shooting with her once how she does her hair and she like went through this step by step process and I was like, Oh my goodness, that's, that's a lot to remember. <laughs> yeah. But um how could you incorporate that with uh, motorcycles? motorcycles would work good with that but even like I feel like pinup can just go with anything yeah you know? like I think uh, pinup's really popular and a lot of people like it but I was thinking of uh researching like uh different types of motorcycles and bikes mm -hmm. and kind of incorporate it that way but even like I'm interested in doing it with um like old airplanes like baking like stuff like that like anything and everything so I'm yeah. interested in it so, I love all the exaggerated expressions because I always have like a, a resting bitch face. So yeah! Like <laughs> Same! <laughs> it is so bad. I have a very un Yeah, I have a very unapproachable face sometimes. That's and how I am. which I never understand because I, I feel like I'm not bubbly at all, but I don't feel yeah. like I'm ever scolding, and I've got dimples, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I mean, like Shirley Temple from my nose down. So. <laughs> I don't know. I get that same thing. Like, they're like, oh, you're just so intimidating. I'm like, sorry, I can't be a cheerleader. And like, I, yeah. you, like smiling. I know. I try to, I try to, like, think about my face, like, okay, like, it feels like my face is a little bit, like, like, smiley, but it's still kind of RBF, I'm like, dang it. RBF, yeah, I know. RBF! <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, you know, you, all the, the, um... You know, my friends, they'll, they'll post how, you know, they, they, they have these creeper moments where guys just randomly come up to them and just start being, like, real creeper douches. And, yeah. and I'm like, I don't get that problem. <laughs> it's just like, I, I don't have people coming up to me randomly. That's how bad my face is. <laughs> no bullshit. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> but um Yeah. <laughs> Funny. So you you were talking about some of like your your hobbies or at least you you and I were um before yeah. the show um and aside from dirt bikes and street bikes uh you said you really liked Kate and, like, cake decorating and baking, like, doing yes. stuff with your hands, art, yeah. like, what, I mean, those can be such vague and large categories, so, yeah. I mean, first, I really want to hear about cake decorating, because yes. that's the sweet, and, uh, anything with sugar, <laughs> chocolate, et cetera, Me too. but, yeah, I mean, uh, working with your hands, are you know, what, what kind of stuff do you really like to do, other than modeling and work? Uh, well, I don't like work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, but, uh, um, so, really into dirt bikings and, uh, motorcycles, but, um, the cake decorating kind of just always did it as, like, a young kid with my sister and mom, but, um, a couple years ago, maybe, I don't, maybe, like, 2012, I took some Wilton cake decorating classes from Michael's and ever since then I was like oh my gosh like I wish I would have done this sooner because it teaches you really good basics that you should know and then ever since then I just started practicing more and actually doing the techniques I learned and going on YouTube for stuff and like looking at pictures on uh, Google for inspiration and like oh like how do you do that and just started doing that and then people at my work started noticing they're like hey can I like pay you for a cake so, yeah. 
then people started like paying me for cakes and like to me they're like they're okay but everyone's like wow like these are so good i'm like hey that one cake you just recently posted it was bougie as hell with the macaroons or macarons how, however you pronounce those cookies i don't know that looked delicious that i probably couldn't have been able to eat it that's how beautiful it looked that could have so good but, but um that was like one of my favorite cakes to do because that was actually a cheesecake it was a birthday cake yes oh my gosh <laughs> Kelsey's over here having an orgasm, folks. I'm like, that's one of my things is like, if I see birthday cake or s'mores flavored anything, those are my go-to. I just snorted. I just snorted on there. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's totally not embarrassing at all. Anyway, sorry. It continue. Okay, so those are like my two go-to flavors, and um, so I found this recipe. I'm like, can I just make a cheesecake that tastes like birthday cake flavor? So I, I found a recipe, and I tried it. And I was like, I tasted it like, oh my fucking god, like this is so fucking good. Oh. But, um, that was one of my uh, favorite cakes because <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> I was able to do whatever I wanted, like no one I didn't have specifications from anyone like I was able to just I had a bunch of extra toppings I needed to get rid of and a bunch of frosting so I was like let me just throw this on top of cake and like it was just really fun being able to go do whatever I wanted and I'm really interested in that I think I'm gonna start getting into it but like monster like dessert or something but uh I don't know if you guys seen like YouTube videos of people those giant bloody Marys with like a whole chicken. Yes! Like, oh my so gosh! I want to start doing stuff like that, but with like dessert. So like that's why I go so crazy with my desserts. Like I don't know if you guys seen that Oreo ice cream cake I did. What? Uh, I just posted a. <laughs> I, it was on my story. I didn't post a picture right yet. Okay. I, a, I never did an ice cream cake before, so I was like, let me just make an ice cream cake. So I did the <laughs> cookies and cream flavor. And that thing had literally two boxes, like two cartons of like the. Do you, do you need a bucket over there, Kelsey? <laughs> <laughs> and it had like a whole box of the uh, cookies and cream little Debbie cakes in it. Ooh. Like two two quarts of ice. It had seven layers, I think. Two quarts of ice cream, like a full thing of whipped topping, and then like frost. It was crazy. So I think I'm gonna start. I think I'm going to start calling it, like, monster dessert or something, but I want to start yeah. to that. So, but I love, like, seeing the crazy desserts with, like, huge things of monster on it, so, yeah. <laughs> so. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know. Cookies and beans is, like, my favorite flavor. I, I love baking, but I've never you know, gone to that extent with it, and it's amazing what, what you can do, and your creativeness that mixes in with that, like, that's awesome, and, you know, I'm deprived over here, Mike hates cheesecake, <laughs> so I'm just like, well, what about all the other delicious cakes out there, why can't I, you know, indulge, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, he's, He's a weirdo. There's a lot of stuff he doesn't like because of texture. So texture can be a big thing. Oh, yes. I'm not in the world, but I can't set up foodies because it's it's not right in my mouth. It's not right in your mouth. All right. That's it's not right in your mouth. <laughs> I, man, that one line that I could say right now. I heard, that's not right in my mouth. <laughs> I heard it too, and I'm sure everybody else did. Folks, she's talking about food. Okay? <laughs> I think I might have heard cookies. Cookies. Was it cookies? Were you talking about cookies? Oh, did I block out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was talking about cheese. Cheese? Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, we were talking about cheese cake too, guys. I'm just saying there was a relation. Okay, 
I can I can see the tiny little relation. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my mind works. Do you um do you have any uh, ink lined up for yourself? Uh, like new tattoos? Yeah, um, once the pandemic's over and all the shops open back up. So I was talking to, I have a list like this, like, yes. like 12 artists on my phone that I want to go to. And <laughs> I was talking to a, this is how I say it, boy tattoo, B-O-Y-E tattoo, Christian on Instagram. He's up in Denmark, and I was recently talking to him, and about, like, I almost did a deposit, but then, like, this whole thing happened, and I don't know if I can do a deposit and travel out to Denmark to do this tattoo, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, like, I was thinking about doing it in uh, November, December, but still, like, is everything going to be okay? I don't want to, like, put this huge deposit down and not be able to go. Right. I still have to, yeah. It'd probably be great to buy plane tickets right now but I'm also <laughs> I've never traveled out of country by myself to another country like do, do they know English out there like I don't know if that's a stupid question but that is not a stupid question <laughs> I'm right there with you English out there I don't know any other English except for maybe a little bit of Spanglish Spanglish yes so like, I <laughs> <laughs> I would assume some would have to know some English you know what I mean because of all the tourists that yeah, come over there? Usually, usually other countries, um, not everyone, but a lot of them have, like, a certain level of English required in um, school. Just like we have to take two years of language, they have yeah. to take, you know, a certain amount of years of English. Not all of them retain it, not all of them know it, or uh, we're in school once, the you know, it was passed. But, um, so yeah, not everybody knows it, but it's not like you'll never, it, it's not like you're going to walk off the plane and never hear English. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I was thinking. So like that person is like my next. That's awesome. Or uh, him or like Jesse Levitz because he did my back. He was, it was a back piece, a collab piece with Stephen Baruth. And I was talking to him about doing my uh, bicep. So it's between him or Boy Tattoo, but Boy uh, Christian, his books are open right now. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, for him, I'd probably finish the rest of my lower back and down or maybe do uh, my abdomen down for him. So, but That'd he's be cool. Be a piece where I'm going to let him do whatever he wants, like freestyle. It, that's what I was going to ask next is if like you had designs in mind or if you were just going to uh, be letting them go with it or so in the beginning when I first started getting tattoos I was kind of like I want this like this design blah 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 but and now what like, you wanted yeah then now that I've been seeing people's art and I'm like really interested in seeing art from tattoo artists and uh now I'm just like, can you just make something for me? I'll give him like an idea, like, like my back piece. I like this. I like, <laughs> yeah. That. So like my back piece, I was like, can you do something with like a skeleton rattlesnake? And they just did my whole back and That's awesome. added that in. Yeah. So I just give them like maybe one idea, or I'll screenshot ideas from their previous work that I really like, and they'll I just let them do whatever whatever they want. So, because I feel like those are the pieces I start liking the most out of all of them, you know. If you're a fan of art, then those are the ones that end up being the most what you want. I'm very similar when I go to get tattoos. Um, I, I go for the artist I like or someone I think will do, you know, the best job with the general style that I want. But yeah. I'll say, you know, I, I want something to do with this or I really want this somewhere in it but just do art like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do your thing and um it, they always turn out way better than anything I could have tried to describe right. or describe myself like I don't know I'm not an artist so I don't know what I want because I want art on my body and I'm not an artist in that sense now you know I mean I'm a ballerina and I love to paint right and yeah. stuff, but. 
Um, I know that the similar situation happened when I went to go get my foot tattooed a few years ago, and I went in with this this bumblebee idea, and all of a sudden, you know, the guy was like, oh, well, let's spice it up a little bit, you know, so it's not some cartoon-looking bumblebee, okay? Mm-hmm. So he managed to find some bumblebee with attitude and and added a crown to it, so now I have a bumblebee with a crown who's got her little arms on her hips with this little serious face going on <laughs> and I love it it was my first color piece ever and I loved it yeah I, so it's usually I feel like that's how it is when you let them do whatever they want Not yeah whatever they want but like let them kind of just do their thing it usually ends up being great so. definitely I'm always happy with it uh let's see here have you done any pinup shoots since you've been modeling, or? Um, I did a, uh, so five or four dimes, they did a kind of a pinup shoot, uh, for my Valentine's, uh, pictures. Oh, yes, I did I, see I, those. That was a very awesome set, by the way. I, I loved it. So I was like, I was like, kind of like, man, like. I don't know if I like bodysuits. They make me look stupid. And then he made me, like, he's like, just try it on, that metallic red. And I, like, saw the pictures of me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I love bodysuits now. Like, I just want to in bodysuits all the time. Yes. I, I don't know. I love them. But um, I did kind of pin-up shoe with him. I did another. I did, like, a pin-up uh, for Christmas. Um... Studio 212, they did a group, like, Christmas meetup, hit up Mm -hmm. style, so I did that, so I got, like, maybe, like, four or five sets from that, and then, uh, McDevitt, uh, Creations pinup, I did a shoot with him, I love his work, like, there's, like, a set that I have not posted yet, and I still want to post, but it just got submitted to a publication, so I can't post it again. Okay. So, he does some amazing pinup work, um... So I think uh, I think that was about it though from for pinup stuff. I'd love to do more though. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially with like the car show stuff. I really the uh, idea I had was um one of my friends he's building a um a rat rod which I would die to like have a rat rod or build one. Yeah, but, sure. Um, we're we're trying to set up a uh, rockabilly uh, pinup themed shoot, but. Every time I uh, message him, he's like, oh, like, my, my car's broken. I got to fix something. So, like, oh, no. I think it's a rat rod. You guys got to, like, uh, fix it. So Yeah. One of these days, we'll be doing a rockabilly pinup shoot with his rat rod. Because I think he's going to try to dress up, like, kind of greaser style and, like, drive around in it and do something well, like that. Well, that'd be that. cool. So, yeah, I, I can't wait. Yeah, that. so, that'll be super yeah. cool. Um, so that's all. Well, well, I didn't go for that, so... Can you elaborate more on the 504 Dimes? Like, what what exactly is it? I'm I'm not sure if, if Mike touched on that, but I myself I didn't, I didn't hear the first part. So, of the uh, 504 Dimes is the magazine publication. So, um, they he reached out to me on Instagram and started talking to me about um, doing like a photo shoot with him and being published in his magazine, and that's when I went out. Um, I flew out to him actually, and that's when he's the one that got me into bodysuits. So oh, okay, like the Valent- yeah. So the Valentine's shoot he did, and then the five hundred four dimes like cover that I made for that. So that was all him. So he's that's really, awesome. He's, yeah, he's super helpful, and he's uh, really great to work with. And he's all about like helping, networking. Like he loves like them uh, with Twisted Angels, so he he tries to help um, like. Uh, share Twisted Angels things too, so that's it's, great. It's really great, yeah. Definitely, got to make sure. Um, if we're not following him on our Twisted Angels IG page, we got to definitely do that then. Because uh, that yeah. that's pretty awesome. I don't know if you got. You might be because I, I think, think we are. About that, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Kelsey had a question over here. Putting you on the spot. <laughs> She's like, what? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. I know that, uh, wait. I know we left 
stuff with Mike asking about social media. He was like, asking me about. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I actually know what I was going to say. <laughs> I went into Brit. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, you know, I know my hair is blue for anybody that uh, can't see us, obviously, <laughs> listening. But uh, I'm, I'm blonde already. I wanted to bring back up the uh, twin thing oh. since now our other twin yeah. is on the show. Hey! <laughs> Twinsies! Tell us about your twin. So, my twin or Bree's twin? Your twin first. <laughs> your twin. So, my twin is just like me. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's darn it. <laughs> yes, we're born on the same day, and I'm the older one by 20 minutes, but we're, we're pretty much the same person. Like, we have a lot of the same interests. Um, we, if we talk to us on the phone, we sound just alike. I don't know if you'd be able to tell us apart. We do all the same hobbies. Like, she's, like, my best friend, and I miss her so much. Like, I can't wait. I can't wait till she moves out here to Miami. So, yeah, we're we're basically almost the same person. Okay. Um, where is she residing right now? She's in Long Beach, California. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, it's really hard being separated. So twins shouldn't be separated. <laughs> no, they shouldn't. And that's another thing too. You know, I mean. Me and my sister, we were born on the same day, um, you know, I was about, like, six minutes after her. Six minutes! And she never lives it down at all. She's, I'm the big sister! da 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 And I'm like, okay, well, you're about six minutes ahead of me. It's not that big of a leap, okay? <laughs> but, um, no... We never thought about that, like, oh, I'm the older one. Like, I don't ever remember that. Oh, <laughs> we the big fights, though. oh, we fought. And that was usually one of the, the starters, you know. She likes the color pink, I like the color blue. We kind of have the okay. same interests, but sometimes not really. I have a longer face. She's got a pie-shaped, shorter face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's... I would get... Have you ever been asked, you know, do you guys feel each other and, and well, like, feel what you guys are feeling? Not yeah, literally feel each time. other, but... <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, I don't think we've been in a situation yet to where we've had that much trauma to, like, know if something's wrong, but we definitely feel off each other's, like, vibes. Like, if she's in a bad mood, I'm in a bad mood. If she's, like, in a good mood good mood like I can always tell when something's wrong but like about the uh oh can you feel pain like if she's in pain type thing I just don't think we've really dealt with a experience like that like traumatic enough to happen like we both haven't been in like a terrible car accident yet to where one of us has hurt so bad like it just hasn't happened right. yet like I, I hope it wouldn't but gotcha. um, I can definitely tell with yeah, like feelings hard. and like vibes and um attitude just stuff like that and like we always know like what the other one's thinking like if something happens and we think it's funny or stupid we just look at each other like <laughs> yeah <laughs> we don't have to say anything we know exactly like, oh my gosh that person what did they do or like did you see that it was so funny <laughs> but just look at each other you don't even have to say it but um like what you're saying when you're like, with the differences, like, I remember growing up, we, like, absolutely hated, like, no, you can't have the same thing, like, I need this one, and you get that one, or, like, you need a different color, or, we, like, hated it. Like, I'm telling you. That's what I was gonna ask. Man. Because, uh, <laughs> like, oh, your guys' parents, like, dressed you all the same yeah. for both Bree, you know, and Bonnie. No. Yeah. No, not even my parents. My freaking grandmother, my mom's mom, she would want us to go out with her and wear the same outfit, the same color, 
same <laughs> hairstyles. And I'm like, look, I'll cut you a deal. I'll wear the same outfit, but it's going to be a different color. Yeah. Like, that's... <laughs> So we were total tomboys, so our mom, when we were younger, like, when we didn't know, we were just taller. She would dress us up just to, like, I don't know how they, because I would see baby pictures. I don't know how my mom and dad told us apart. And then we got older, right. and we started getting more into, like, the tomboy shit. And, like, I just remember we'd always fight, like, I want that one, you get that <laughs> one, or you're the girly <laughs> one, or you get that color, I get that color. But now that we're older, like, we want to look the same. We want to buy the same clothes, like. We always plan, like, hey, how are you going to do your hair? How are you going to do your makeup? What are you going to wear? Because we want to, like, dress and look the same. And it's just so weird, like, yes, change. Because, like, in the beginning, I think it's, like, you just want to be your own person. But now it's, like, yeah. like it's cool being a twin. Like, I love it. And I don't know why I ever was so, like, annoyed about us looking, to get, looking alike. Right. Because we're trying to find yourselves <laughs> and your individuality at that point. And now, you, now that you both kind of know who you are and how you want to present yourself etc you know you you don't feel like you have to be dressed completely different or look completely separated from your sister to be yourself yeah yeah definitely um i have unconsciously matched my sister without even planning anything (laughs) that that's how that that goes (laughs) yeah definitely I went to pick her up from the airport one day, and I drove up, and we had the exact same out, same shirt, <laughs> nearly the same shorts, and our, we did our hair the same. We didn't plan it, but it ended up being the same. We had our hair, like, in the pool with the ponytail, our, like, cut up, sh- we because we have some of the same clothes, so we had on the exact same shirt and really similar shorts, and, like, I remember pulling up to the airport to pick her up, and I just, like... We just immediately started dying laughing because we saw each other. Like, I remember, like, looking up at her, and she, like, looked at me as I was pulling up, and we were just laughing because we are like, how did we dress the same? It's so funny. Right. (laughs) Man, you know, it's a love-hate relationship between my sister. When we were growing (laughs) up, we were, like, claws out and everything, but, you know, as we got older... I mean, we're we're there for each other. Like she yeah. went through some personal stuff uh, two years ago, and she didn't tell me, but I already knew right off the bat what happened. So when I found out after she finally was like, "Well, this is what happened," I was like, "Well, I already knew that. So why couldn't you just tell me?" <laughs> this is not new news. Uh, it's not. <laughs> yeah. But we would get in some crazy fights when we were younger, but now that we're older, <laughs> we just say mean ass shit to each other. Yeah, <laughs> that. We don't really get in like physical fights anymore. But do you guys laugh about question. the physical fights that you guys got into? <laughs> um, I don't. Yeah, I guess so. But a lot of times we get asked like, "Who would win? Like, who wins the fight?" So I'm like, "Oh my gosh, it's always like a competition with people. Like, it's super annoying." Always. <laughs> yeah, like. Who's better at this? Who's who does this? I'm like right. Uh. <laughs> so, but like, um, it's funny because like what you're saying earlier, Brie, was you have a longer face. Like, I'm the bigger twin, so I have like a more rounder face. She's like more of like the smaller, I guess, person. But um, uh, I think we have each other's like body parts. Like, I have like two different ears and two different eyebrows and she has two different ears and two different eyebrows and I think at some point in our fetus like you think you switched it up huh (laughs) here take this and I'll trade you for that get my ear back (laughs) (laughs) it's it's not so prominent anymore but when I was in in my mom's womb my sister, I guess it was the way she was leaning up against me or what, but my left ear up at the top right here is flat. Uh-huh. And my parents would always tell me, that was your sister pushing you out of the way. I was like, <laughs> thanks. That's great. It's all mean. It is mean. <laughs> God. It's the shit I had to grow up with. (laughs) You said your sister's still in California. Well, you said your sister's 
yeah. in California. But um, you used to live in Cali, right? No, I I used to live in California. I moved to Florida, close to Clearwater, like two years ago. So I'm in Florida now. So okay. were you born in Cali? Yeah, uh, born and raised in California. Okay. And um, so April, my twin, she should be moving out to Florida like this summer. So I can't wait for her to get out here. Is, is that like to, you know, be closer to you or? Uh, I mean, just work. Did she get a job? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, like uh, work and then uh, work. They kind of let us have like picks of where we want to go and. Uh, that was one of her picks she got was going out to Miami, so I'm super excited about that. I can't wait. That's awesome. So I think we can get a lot of cool things uh, done together. Definitely. And out, so. Oh man. Well, I mean, it's like I said, a love hate. We love each other though. And it's awesome. I didn't realize that you had a twin until yeah. I saw on Mike's little little notebook down here that it's <laughs> your twin. So I was like, oh, yeah. snap! <laughs> so we, I, uh, we've been trying to do some stuff more often. Like, she's kind of, she, like, uh, recently went through some things. So now she's, like, not married anymore. So now... I feel like we've been able to do more stuff, like, on social media yeah. now, so I've been trying to get her involved with doing a, we've been doing these uh, Instagram live videos, so, like, our recent one, we did a, uh, we did two so far, our first one was, um, I googled, like, the top, like, questions that twins are asked, and then I did, like, the top 20 <laughs> questions that twins are asked, and, like, the top six were pretty spot on, like, I was like, yes, I get asked this every person that I meet. And then the other one we did, we did a, we did this um, drinking game called Drink If, and then we did dares with each other. So like, <laughs> one, of the, <laughs> one of the dares she did was like she had to put like peanut butter on her face, like uh, like a face mask, and then another one she got was like um, uh, wrap yourself like a mummy. So she had peanut butter and then she had to wrap herself like yum, paper, and like it looked so funny because she looked like a, a burn victim with like one eye hole and like a tiny little mouth open for like her, her little like straw to go. it was so oh my funny. gosh the only, the only bad thing is like I guess Instagram doesn't let you save your live videos like Facebook lets you save your live videos so like those videos I have like they're just gone like I was like where's these videos at but I guess they don't save so now it's like I can't post them <laughs> Yes. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Do it. I was going to ask um, you, too, if your sister does any modeling or whatever out in California. Um, no, she, well, like, because now that she has, uh, she's not in, like, a relationship anymore. She has, like, free time to actually go do stuff like that now. And um, so when she comes out here to Florida, I think she's going to really get into all, like, the, the photo shoots and modeling. And then um, I mentioned earlier... <laughs> that uh 504 dimes they want to do like a uh, twin themed issue so this my 504 dime <laughs> <laughs> so, but gonna, Ga gavin has entered the building for to get out here. <laughs> Well, I'm going to step out, and I'm going to let Michael okay. take over. Okay. Thank you guys for having me on this show. I'll talk to you all later. Bye. 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 <laughs> all the diapers have changed. So. All the diapers have changed. I got, you know, I was I was a little, you know, uh, what's the, what was the name of the movie that uh, Mr. Mom? I was Mr. Mom <laughs> there for a while, so that was fun. So I'll, I'll have to go back and I'll have to listen to the... Uh, to the stuff about the twins and whatnot, get get a chuckle out of that one. So, but anyway, so uh, we usually end up every week. We do have music, like I said, it's uh, Black Door by the Holston Effect this this week. And what do you have? What do you, do you have stuff coming up now that you have kind of planned? You know, once once things kind of relax a little bit. Um, five 
Five of the Ford's arms is dying for him to get out. <laughs> <laughs> He's been bugging me, like, joking around me, like, when are you going to come out here and shoot? Like, I can't. But, like, uh, so a lot of stuff with Five of the Ford's arms, like, we have, like, ideas galore. So I have a feeling we're going to be doing, like, because I can only go out there for so long. So right. if I go out there for, like, a weekend, we're going to be working our asses off like yeah. getting a lot of shoots done so 504 dimes we're gonna be doing some things um banshee apparel they got in contact with me about doing a couple shoots and then uh gears and glory <laughs> we've been uh i met him eric runyon at a um Gibtown bike fest when i did the tattooed sweethearts contest uh-huh. and we've been trying to work to do shoots <laughs> probably since like january but <laughs> things just keep happening yeah yeah and, I went out of country for like a while and I'm going to be going out of country again. And then, um, so things just keep getting in the way of me and Gears and Glory. And then, um, I thought there was a couple other ones. Well, we know Calvin. I mean, we have quite a few people that work with Calvin and, and Calvin and I. Calvin's actually from the Pen- from Pennsylvania. He's from the Penn State area up that way. Okay. And, uh, okay. you know, but, and he comes up here. He goes up to like to the Virginia area every now and then because he's got family in Virginia, I think, and he uh, comes up and visits them, and he d- bangs out a couple shoots with people up in this area, and then he uh, bounces around. Last, well, sorry, not last year, actually, uh, 2018, a little over a year ago, because it was in the fall. Uh, we were with him out in Oklahoma for some of the stuff, you know, for Ink in Oklahoma and stuff. So, uh, uh, and then he drove down. He drove down to Dallas and. Uh, we actually went that that we ended up in Dallas uh, about a week or so later, two weeks later because okay. we we had an event there. So, yeah, we've known Calvin yeah. for 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 a couple of years now, and he's got he has a number of our ladies that that do some stuff for him too. So, okay. but uh, so yeah, he's 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 a pretty cool dude. You know, obviously he has the uh, a different version of Brap. It's not the it's not the dirt bikes. It's more of the four wheelers and and ATVs and stuff. Okay. But. That's, uh... Too. They got the yeah. quads. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, which is fine because I, I used to have a quad too. So yeah, so that, that all works out pretty well. Now, so. That works out well. Well, I want to thank yeah, you for I want to thank you for being on the show this week. Though it was a lot of fun having you on the show, and um, I know Bree was looking forward to talking to you, so that's why I made sure we we got her on today too. Yeah. Um, so before we go, we want everybody to be able to know where to find you. So tell everybody how they can find you on Instagram and Facebook and wherever else. Let, let, let everybody know where to find you. Okay, so for Instagram, it's at Blondie underscore Braps. And then Facebook is Blonde Brap. And then my Facebook page, everything's basically Blondie Braps. So Facebook page is Blondie Braps. Uh, Twitter, Blondie Braps. I also have a YouTube page. There's not anything on there yet but that's a uh, blondie braps um i have my all my links posted on my link in uh in my bio in my instagram that has all like my instagram twitter uh youtube amazon wishlist all that stuff and then my blondiebraps.com and you can literally type in my website blondie blondiebraps.com and that brings up my website of all like the the brand i'm trying to create for myself so well, and that's yeah. that's really good too. I'll touch on that real quick because one of the okay. things we one of the things we really stress with with Twisted Angels is that regardless of, of all the other brands and everything that you work with, at the end of the day, you are your own brand. Mm-hmm. So, and, and you are your own customer service representative, your own marketing department, and all that other stuff. So, it's really important to to have kind of a game plan and, or and at least an idea of what you want to do. And like you said, you're trying to do all these different things in order to do that. So that, that's good that you have all that in mind. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, there's like a lot of, there's like a lot of other brands I'm trying to work with, like uh, Grudge Life, they're a really good uh, company. Like he's super helpful as well. Uh, Deadweight Label, mm-hmm. he's a great person. He's also another uh, brand that's trying to come up. So I'm just trying to work with people like that and they're trying to work with me and, I just want to, like, shout them all out, too. Like, 504, Twisted Angels helps me out a lot, too. Uh, Grudge Life, um, Deadweight uh, Label. I'm pretty sure I'm, like, missing a bunch of other people, but it's hard to, like, think of stuff right off the top of your head. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. We'll we'll make sure they're all posted, you know. I'll make a post, and and we'll make sure that they, they get shared. Anybody you forget. 
Yeah, I just it, it just sucks to like be talking about people like oh crap like I forgot them or like I didn't get to mention them and just. Happens happens to me all the time, but my excuse is that I'm old, so I can get away with the fact that I'm old. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, you can, you can you can go with the thing that you're blonde. I mean, you can go with that one if you want. So, but uh, but uh, I go with the many voices in my head, you know. That doesn't surprise. That does not surprise me at all. That doesn't surprise me at all. I got too much on my plate, like literally, like a lot of sweets. Yeah. <laughs> awesome alright well we want to thank you again for joining us on the show and uh, uh, we look forward to seeing more of you uh, You know, both with Twisted Angels and with 504 Dimes and all those other brands and stuff and yeah. whatnot. so uh, we wish you all the luck and obviously you know anything we can do to help you out just give us a shout and let us know okay yeah I'm so happy and glad that you guys let me be on the show like I think this is the first time I did, like, a radio show like this. It was really fun, and it was interesting, and I had a lot of fun, and it was great. Like, I really appreciate you guys, like, with your help, and let me be a part of the show, and everyone else that's been a part of the show on you, Brad. Oh, absolutely. We, we're, we're happy to have you on the show. I know that... Uh... And we were anxious to kind of get, we, we try to rotate a little bit where we have, you know, we have somebody from another country, and then we have somebody in the U.S., and we try and rotate it back and forth a little bit. So, uh, but yeah, we really appreciate you being on the show. And uh, like I said, you know, anything we can do to help you out and help you, uh, you know, push your brand and, and get Blondie Rap up there, you know, that's obviously, you know, uh, a priority for us. So before we go, though, one more thing before we go, we've got to have the sound effect. you got to do it. <laughs> well, it's got to be a good one. Not, not, not nothing half-assed. You got to, you got, you got to say it like you mean it. Are you gonna do it too? Oh, hell no! We're gonna let you do it all on your own. <laughs> all right. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in, and we will be back in a few minutes. And uh, thanks again to Brandy. Brandy, yeah, to Blondie Brap. See, I'm thinking Brap and Brandy. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. So. <laughs> all right. Yeah, really, right? So, all right. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I need a twin to just kind of bail me out upon occasion. So, all righty. Thanks again, and we'll be back in just a couple minutes. everyone, this is April Love of the Twisted Angels. Tune in to the Twisted Hour here on WBUZ 95, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for listening. Right, and we are back. We are wrapping up this week's show. We want to thank everybody for tuning in here to WBZ 95 in the Twisted Hour with myself and uh, I'm Mike, by the way, and Kelsey. And Brianna was with us today, too. She managed to join us for this show. And we are very happy that we had our friend Blondie Brapp uh, from the Twisted Angels was on the show this week. And uh, that was really cool. I didn't know she had a twin. That was pretty cool. But uh, anyway, this week, we our, our song this week, with, with Peyton coming in to say goodbye to everybody, too, uh, we have, uh, who, who do we have this week for our song this week? Who are we closing out with this week? Oh, yes, the, the Whole Foot Effect. They are with, um, actually, Diminished Pitch Entertainment, who is, uh, I guess, the, the, the gentleman that is friends of us, friends of ours from there is uh, Jeff Brandeberry, who is the father of uh, Matthew Brandeberry from the uh, from the band From Ashes to New. So uh, they, they you know, link up with a lot of great music and stuff, so we're definitely looking forward to hearing that song. So I'm sure you guys will like it too. It's called uh, Black Door from the Holson Effect, right? So once again, thank you everybody for tuning in this week, and we will see you next week. In the meantime, y'all get twisted. Let it go. Thank <laughs> you.